All right, today we are going to continue talking about graphs of trigonometric functions. And we are going to find equations of parallel lines that a function oscillates between. So what you do is you find the bounds of the trigonometric function. If you're sine and cosine, they oscillate between negative 1 and 1. Remember your graphs, unless you do some transformations, sine and cosine both, if it's sine, it does this. But it oscillates between negative 1 and 1. If it's cosine, it does this. But again, it's between negative 1 and 1. So all you do is you set up the linear inequalities of the function. You put the linear part minus 1. You put your function in the middle, your linear part plus 1 on this side. That is the equation of the first line. That is the equation of the second line. And your function will oscillate between them. And then we can check our answer graphically by typing in this side for y1, this side for y2, the function for y3, and see that it oscillates. You're going to see here in a second what it looks like. All right, so it says the graph of the function y equals 2x plus sine x oscillates between two parallel lines. Find the equations of the lines, then graph the lines and the function in the same viewing window. Do you see how they're taking, if I take y equals 2x, that's a line. That would start at 0 and go up 2 over 1. It's that line right there. Sine x is this function that does this. So what happens if I add those two functions together? Well, what you're going to get is you're going to get these two parallel lines and the function oscillates between them like so. We have to find the equations of those lines. And it's actually very simple. All you do is recall the bounds on the value of sine x. The sine function oscillates between negative 1 and 1. So given this information, you have the following sequence of inequalities for y equals 2x plus sine x. And what that is, is you take your line, this 2x, and you add it to this. So I have 2x minus 1. And over here you have plus 1. So I take the linear part and I put plus 1 on this side. And there, my friends, y equals 2x minus 1 and y equals 2x plus 1 are going to be the lines that the function oscillates between. So if I graph the lines y equals 2x minus 1, y equals 2x plus 1, and the function y equals 2x plus sine x in my graphing calculator, make sure you're in radians, okay, you get this picture. And my window was negative 2 pi to 2 pi. And I think they're counting by, this is 2 pi, they're counting by pi over 2's. Okay, and my y window is going from negative 8 to 8. You see there's your 2x plus 1, there's your 2x minus 1, and there's your sine function that's in the middle. Pretty cool. All right, so you try this one. Hit pause, come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got 3. All right, my function is y equals x minus sine x. Here's the linear part. So I put my function in the middle, and I put my minus 1 here and my plus 1 here, and then my linear part goes here and here, and those are the two linear equations. Easy breezy. All right, now they want you same sign, but they want, or same problem, but they want you to graph it. They want you to graph the y1, the, the line on the left, y2, the line on the right, and y3, they want you to type in x minus sine x and see which graph you get. So hit pause, come back when you're ready, and hopefully you got two. I would type in x minus 1 on, for y1, uh, yeah, and x plus 1 for y2, that for y3, and you should end up with that picture. Okay, all right, sums and differences of sinusoids. Sinusoids can be written in this form. Okay, sums that are sinusoid function. It says, if you have a sinusoid function, and another sinusoid function, and you add them together, the sinusoid will have the period of 2 pi over b. Now, here's what's 
the only way this works is if the functions that are being added and subtracted have the same period, then their sum or difference will be a sinusoid. If they do not have the same period, then it's not a sinusoid. Okay, so for that, you have to check periods of the functions that you're adding. So you got to remember for sine and cosine and cosine and, oh, I put that, for sine and cosecant and for cosine and secant, the periods are 2 pi over b. For tangent and cotangent, your period is pi, pi over b. Okay, so it says determine whether f of x is a sinusoid. Well, the first thing you're going to do is check to see what the period of 3 sine x is. Well, the period would be 2 pi over b. b is whatever's touching x, so the period is 2 pi. My cosine x function has a period of 2 pi over b. Again, b is 1, so my period is 2 pi. So since they have the same period, then yes, this is a sinusoid. Okay? Now, I explained it and animated all this stuff in. Okay? It says, but, I mean, really, that's all there is to it. Um, again, just to watch it all, it says sums and differences of sinusoids with the same period are sinusoids. So the period of the sinusoid is of a sine is 2 pi over b. In this case, b is 1, so its period is 2 pi. Just like I showed you, they're just making it a lot longer process. The period of a cosine function is 2 pi over b. So cosine x also has a b of 1, which means its period is 2 pi. And since they have the same period, their difference is also a sinusoid. So, yes, it's a sinusoid. Okay? All right, so let's look at some of these. Well, if I look at the period of this one, it would be 2 pi over b. And if I look at the period of this one, it would be 2 pi over b. They match, so yes, it's going to be a sinusoid. If I look at this one, the period is going to be 2 pi over 5. If I look at this one, the period is going to be 2 pi over 3. They do not match, so no, this will not, the sum will not be a sinusoid. Okay, here the period would be 2 pi over 3. And here the period would be 2 pi over 2. They do not match, so no, this would not, this difference would not be a sinusoid. Here, this, the period here would be 2 pi over 3 sevenths, and you could keep change flip it if you want to, but I'm just checking. Here, the period would be 2 pi over 3 sevenths. Here, the period would be 2 pi over 3 sevenths. You can simplify if you want, but I can tell they're all equal, so yes, this sum and difference would be a sinusoid. Okay? All right, so you try this one, hit pause, come back when you're ready, and you should get yes, because the period here would be 2 pi over pi, the period here would be 2 pi over pi, they match, so yes, it is a sinusoid. Try this one, hit pause, come back when you're ready, and hopefully you got no. Because the period here would be 2 pi over 1. The period here, tangent, is pi over b. So that would be pi over b. They do not equal. So no, that sum would not be a sinusoid. Okay, so now to express the sum of sinusoids as a sinusoid. First of all, you're going to find b of the function. This is b of your sinusoid. Okay, the period of the function is the same as the periods of the two sinusoids being added or subtracted. Therefore, they must have the same b. Find the amplitude and the phase shift. So you're going to graph the function using a graphing calculator. You're going to calculate your amplitude. And what you're going to do is you're going to calculate the maximum, top of any of the waves. This will be your A. Your phase shift, you want to calculate the first x-intercept from the origin, the one closest to the origin. This will be your H. Then you plug in your A, your B, and your H, and you're done. To check, you can type in the original function for Y1, your sinusoid for y2, and then your graph should be virtually, virtually identical. All right, so it says, let f of x equals 2 sine x plus 5 cosine x. From the discussion above, you should conclude that f of x is a sinusoid, because the period here would be pi, 2 pi over 1, 2 pi over 1, so both periods are 2 pi, so yes, it's going to be a sinusoid. you got to make sure 
that that's true. If that's not true, you can't write it as a sinusoid anyway. Okay, so the next, the first thing I have to do is I have to figure out what the period is, which I already did. Okay, so, or what B is. Well, the period of 2 sine x would be 2 pi over 1, because B is 1. The period of 5 cosine x would be 2 pi over 1, which means B is 1. So for my sinusoid, my B is 1. Okay, so I've got B. Now I've got to get A, and I've got to get H. So what we're going to do for there is we're going to graph it. Okay, so if I graph it, I type it in very carefully, I get this picture, and I'm going to go to the first tip of the wave right here, and I'm going to calculate maximum with the calculator. You know, you go to second trace, and let me see what number that is, second trace, uh, five, no, four, choice four will be to calculate your maximum. Anyway, so now I know that A is 5.39. And then to get your H, you calculate the first x-intercept, the, the one closest to the origin. There's these two right here, but this one is obviously closer. So if I calculate that 0, um, which is choice 2, when you go to calculate second trace, you get H equals negative 1.19. So now if I plug in my B my A and my H, I get, plugging in right here, A, B, and H, I have my A is 5.39 sine parentheses 1 parentheses X minus a negative 1.19. And then if I clean this up a little bit, that double negative will turn positive and I get 5.39 sine of x plus 1.19. The 1 wouldn't change anything. And that would be my sinusoid. So now if I type this in for y1, which should already be there, and type this in for y2, you should get the same picture. I mean, we've got um, different windows here, which I don't know why they do that. You're not going to look up the same. This one went from negative 2 pi to 2 pi, but the y went from negative 10 to 10, where this one's only going from negative 6 to 6. But you can see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a little bit, there's your 5.39, there's your negative 1.19, and this is going down to, they are virtually the same. Okay? All right, so you try this one, hit pause, come back when you're ready, and hopefully you got A equals 4.47, B equals 3, and H equals 0 0.15. And I didn't even look at this. Okay, so let's look at this. All right, so we've got the period here. I mean, you can tell B is 3, B is 3, so B is going to be 3. Okay, your A and your H, we're going to have to graph. So, give me a second here. Do that. Where would be on that get my calculator. Where did my calculator go? So we're going to go to y equals, we're going to clear that out, we're going to type 4 sine 3x, close your parentheses, minus 2 cosine 3x, close your parentheses. I'm going to go to my window, I'm counting from negative 2 pi to 2 pi, and I'm counting by pi's. And I'm going from negative 2 to 2. I don't know if that's going to be big enough. Let's go from negative 10 to 10. I don't know how big these amplitudes are going to be. All right, so if I graph that, there's my function. Okay, so now I want to calculate this point right up here. So I'm going to go to second calc, and I want to do a maximum, so 4. I'm going for this one. It could be any of the waves, actually, but I want to get close to the top. 
So there's the left bound. Then get over to the other side. There's my right bound. And there's my amplitude of not. Oh yeah, there's my amplitude of 4.47. You're looking at the Y coordinate, not the X coordinate, my bad. So there's your um, amplitude. And now if I go back and I calculate this little intercept right there, so now I'm going to calculate a zero. All right, and I want to get to the left bound. About right there, maybe. Yeah, about right there. Ah! right there and then get past it for the right bound right there enter no, I didn't hit the bound right mm. okay because again second count zero and let's see we want to go how to get below so I need a negative y value that would be good and then I want to get above where y is a positive and then hit enter and there is my x coordinate of my shift, which is 0.1545, whatever, and they call that 0.15. Okay? Alright. You know what? I'm going to. Maximum, left bound, right bound, enter, take a screenshot, save it, insert it. Oh, there we go. And there we go, my friends. Okay, so come on. Again, I hit pause. Sorry, so it's got to go through this all again. And there you can see where I got my amplitude and my phase shift. Okay, so there you go. All right, showing a function is periodic, but not a sinusoid. You can be periodic, but not be a sinusoid. If they're not a sinusoid, then they don't have the same periods. But it could still be periodic, which we check using the same way we always did. Grab it on the calculator, check and see if you've got a, a pattern that starts repeating over a certain interval every time. So it says, show that f of x equals sine 2x plus 3, cosine 3x three is periodic, but not a sinusoid. Well, the period of sine of 2x would be 2 pi over 2. The period of cosine 3x would be 2 pi over 3. They do not match, so it is not sinusoid. However, if I graph this, it is periodic. Now, they only graphed one period, so you can't really tell because you can't see it repeating. So I went ahead and graphed um, from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. And if you, you can see that if you picked up this half of the graph and laid it on top of this half, it starts repeating. Okay? So it is periodic, but it is not a sinusoid. All right. So you try this one. And hit pause. Come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got B. Is the difference a sinusoid? No, because the period here would be 2 pi over 2. The period here would be 2 pi over 3. So no, it is not a sinusoid. Is the function periodic? No. If I graph it, I get this graph. If you pick up this half and put it on top of this half, it would look like this, which does not line up on top of that. So no. It's not periodic.
Okay, you try this one. Hit pause. Come back when you're ready. And you should get no and yes. It's not a sinusoid because the period here would be 2 pi over 1. The period here would be 2 pi over 2. The period here would be 2 pi over 3. The period here would be 2 pi over 4. None of them match. So, it's not a sinusoid, clearly. If I, is it periodic? Well, if you type this in the graphing calculator, you get this function. And if you pick up this side and put it on top of this side, you get the same picture. So, yes, it's periodic. Okay, so how do you determine whether a sum or difference of a sinusoid is also a sinusoid? If the periods match. And what is the period what is the difference between a periodic function and a sinusoid? Well, the sinusoids periodic just means that it's going to that it's just you're gonna repeat a pattern every same interval. Okay, whereas a sinusoid means that you can write it in the form of that uh, A, uh, what is it, um, sine B X minus H, right? And if, if it just, again, if, if it's a sinusoid, you can write it like this. If it's periodic, you, you, you might be able to write it like this, but you might not be able to write it like this. Okay. All right, and we are at homework, so we are done. Happy homeworking, and I will see you next time.